Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this online training video. This video is Peer Access Registration and Adding Access Points In. In this module, we will review Registering a new tenant in Peer Access Cloud Registering a new tenant under a Cloud Integrator License and adding access points to Pure Access using the Access Point Wizard. In this module, we're just going to go ahead and jump right into the software and walk through all of these points. Here we are at our main Pure Access login screen. For this course, we'll be using IsonusPureAccessDemo.com. If you purchase a cloud license from us, you'll be using IsonusPureAccessCloud.com. More than likely, for your final exam at the end of this, you'll be using our Isonus Peer Access demo site. The first thing we need to do is register our license. We don't have a login yet because we haven't created anything underneath this new tenant that we're about to register. So we're going to go down and click on the register link. It's going to ask us for a license key. This is what you would receive in the email from us. Here I've created one specifically for this training course. So I'll enter that license key in and then click register. The first thing it's going to ask us for is integrator information. This links this tenant to you as the integrator. This protects you if the end user tries to bring in another integrator without your knowledge. So here we'll just put in some basic information. Obviously in the real world you'd actually want to put in your actual information. Once we enter the integrator profile in, we'll go ahead and click continue. This screen is the actual tenant profile. This first portion here is critical as this is going to create the first user in our system and give them administrator rights to log into Peer Access. Alright, so I've created an administrator with the name of Jan Kowalski at jank at gondor.gov. Assign them a password to log in. We've set the company as Gondor, entered in some additional information here. And at the bottom, there's this populate with default data that is by default checked. We can go ahead and leave that checked. It's going to create a simple rule in our system that we can use later on. Now we'll go ahead and click Create Tenant to create this tenant. It's going to ask us to agree to this end user license agreement. So basically, you have to scroll through this at the bottom, click Agree, set in your initials. And then it will give you the option to print it out if you want to, or go ahead and save it and continue to move on. That's it. Now we have a blank peer access tenant, and we can begin populating this with access points. Before we do that, we need to make sure that our access points are configured. So let's go ahead and bring up the configuration tool. Go ahead and click Discover Units. So I've got a bunch of stuff plugged into my network here. We need to change this to isonuspeeraccessdemo.com. So again, if you're taking a final exam, most likely it's going to be on this site. Out in the real world where you're actually installing these back to your cloud application, it would be isonuspeeraccessdemo.com or an IP address if you're pointing it to a local peer access manager instance. I'll go ahead and select all these devices and point them all to demo.com or make sure that they're pointed to demo.com. So we'll go ahead and click Configure Units. It'll go ahead and push these settings out and reboot them all. And then we can begin adding in these access points into Pure Access. Great, all my devices have rebooted, so we'll go ahead and minimize this. We'll probably pull it up again just because it lists the MAC addresses that we'll need to enter in to add these access points in. Before we move on to that, let's go ahead and log into the actual cloud application here. My login to isonuspeeraccesscloud.com is actually an integrator license. So if I go to settings, I now have this option for tenant manager. And when I click on that, I can actually create additional tenants underneath here. So we'll go ahead and we'll add another tenant in and we'll see that it's a little bit different than registering a single tenant directly on the peer access application. So it's gonna ask for a tenant name. So we'll go ahead and add this in. We'll call this Torchwood. Change the time zone if you need to. I'm in Eastern time, so I'll go ahead and leave it at that. We'll do 
just put some information in here. Populate with default data is unchecked. We can go ahead and check this again. It just creates a basic rule in our system that we can utilize later on. So we'll go ahead and change this. Okay, now we'll go ahead and add this in. So now if I click up here, this is where my different tenants are displayed. When I click on that, I can switch between these different tenants. So Jason C is my actual integrator. Then moving on to Torchwood would be a unique tenant underneath my integrator license that I could then configure for that end user and then give them a login into that and resell my services to them. Let's move back to our demo site where we're gonna add our access points in. We're gonna go down here to access control and then change our menu to access points. Of course, we don't have any access points because we just created this tenant, so we're gonna go ahead and add some in. To add in access points, we're just gonna click the add access point in the upper right hand corner here. It's gonna pop up a new window, basically a wizard to walk us through adding an access point into the system. Note that this new window is the same aspect ratio as most mobile devices. A technician could be out in the field, pull this up on his mobile device, Android or iPhone, and be able to add in access points through here, test them right at the door. He can click the scan button and take a picture of the MAC address and pull it in that way. But the exact same wizard that we're going to walk through on the PC here is the same wizard that you can use on the mobile device. For the purpose of the class, we're going to go ahead and walk through it on the PC. We're going to type in the MAC address. This is how we're going to associate this device with our tenant. When you type in the MAC address, you don't need to actually capitalize anything or put in the hyphens. It will automatically do it for you. The one thing you need to remember is that you need to hit the tab or click somewhere else in the screen. If you leave the cursor sitting at the end of the MAC address, it won't ever actually properly finish the command. So I'm going to hit tab to go to the access point name, which is our next text field. In the upper right hand corner, it'll come up and it'll say RCO4. It's going to go ahead and negotiate its connection, and then we'll see some additional information right below that. So we'll go ahead and give this a name of employee entry. I'm going to hit tab to go to the next field, which is our access point groups. The only group we have in here is this all doors group that was created by that populate default data. If this was an existing system and we were adding access points to it, we could add it into the appropriate groups from here. Every single access control system I've ever done has an all doors group, so we'll just go ahead and add this door to the all doors group. We'll use it later when we create groups and rules. Now from here we could click finish later and finish the configuration sometime else, but we're already in the wizard so we might as well just click next and continue to go through it. Now it's going to ask you what you have connected here. I have a lock connected, I have a door sense connected, I actually have a Rex connected, but it's going to ask us to configure that later when we go under the access point configuration if we need to. By default the Rex is just turned on. We're going to go ahead and leave the beeper turned on. I'm going to turn the tamper sensor off for this because I have this rear controller sitting on my desk and if I bump it or something happens it might trigger the tamper alert. We'll go ahead and click next to move on to the next screen. It's going to ask us how our lock is connected. The RCO4 has that solid state relay so it needs to know how the lock is wired in. We have a fail secure lock for our demo here. Whether you're using our demo kit or what I have on my desk here for the purposes of this course. Of course, if you had a magnetic lock or something, you would say that you have a fail-safe lock. Does this lock have an EDK? Yes, we do have an EDK. When you get your training kit, it'll probably have an EDK with it, and you'll probably install these out in the field. But just answer yes or no. Here we say yes. It's going to ask us if we've reset the EDK to factory defaults. Yes, I have, and most of the time when you're buying it from the factory, it's fine. If for some reason the EDK doesn't work, the first thing you want to try to do is to hard reset it by pushing a paper clip to the hole in the front while it's powered up for a couple seconds in order to reboot it to its default setting. 
Here I'm just going to go ahead and say yes because I've already done that. Now it's actually going to go through and test the lock. So at this time you should actually hear the lock click or see the door unlock or whatever the case might be. Here I can hear my electric strike clicking. So yes, it did unlock. For the purposes of the course, we're going to go ahead and say no, we don't want to change the EDK code. You can change it out in the field if you want to. Now it's going to launch into our door sense test. So it's basically asking you to open the door and then close the door. So we had a successful test there. So I'm going to go ahead and click next. It's going to ask, do you want to test a badge? Sure, we'll go ahead and test a badge. This doesn't mean that the badge is going to provide entry into the system or anything like that. It's just making sure that the reader controller can see badges and read prox badges correctly. So we'll go ahead and click ready and we'll put a badge in front of it. And now we've had all of our tests successful, so we're good to go. We'll hit testing complete. Now it's going to give us some basic information. Do we want to change the latch interval from three seconds to something else? Maybe we need a little bit longer, five seconds. Do we want to go back and enable our tamper sensor? Maybe we were wrong and we just want to turn it back on. I'm going to leave this not enabled because again, it's sitting on my desk. I'm going to go ahead and uncheck Rex event. Most of the time you don't need this checked. Just because the Rex is on one side of the door, the reader's on the other, do you really want the Rex triggering a beep on the reader? Probably not. We'll go ahead and click settings complete. Now it's going to tell us that during this whole time, the door's been in an unlocked state, which it has. This just makes sure that you don't lock yourself out, or maybe you need to leave it unlocked for a certain amount of time while contractors continue to go in and out. But from this stage, I can leave it unlocked. If I leave it unlocked, I have to manually go into software and actually lock it back up. For the purposes of this course, we can just say that the door is going to lock back up immediately. And there we have it. We've added in our first access point, which was our RCO4. The RCL3 is pretty similar, but let's walk through that one as well. So we'll go ahead and add another access point. We'll go ahead and type this MAC address in here. Remember to hit the tab button to go to the next field, so it will initialize the command. We're going to go ahead and call this our front door. And we'll drop this into our all doors access point group because it's a group for all doors. All right, so here we see our model RCO3 and we can see that the device is connected. So let's go ahead and click next. On this door, I have a door sense and we'll see that on the RCO3, we have a separate Rex aux and it adds them in into this screen here. So I have a Rex, we'll go ahead and tell that we have a Rex. Again, this RCO3 has a tamper sensor. It's sitting on my desk, so I don't want it to go off. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uncheck that tamper sensor for this course here. We'll go ahead and click next. Does this lock have an EDK? Yes, I have an EDK on this one. So it's gonna walk us through the same thing as before. Yes, I've manually reset it. And it's gonna go ahead and run through the test of the lock. Yes, it unlocked. No, I don't want to change the EDK code because this is a controlled environment, so I don't need to. And it's going to go into our door sense test, ask us to open the door. So open and close the door there. It's going to ask us to test the Rex, so we'll go ahead and click ready. And we'll activate the Rex. That was successful, and finally it wants to test a badge. Again, just like the RCO4, this doesn't program a badge, it doesn't do anything, it's just making sure that the device is actually reading prox cards. So we'll go ahead and click ready, and we'll just swipe the badge in front of it. Everything successful, we'll click testing complete. And just like last time, it's going to go through our basic settings here. Do we want to turn a tamper sensor back on? What do we want the racks to do? What do we want the aux to do, etc.? I'm going to go ahead and uncheck Rex event again and click settings complete. Just like the RCO4 sets it into an unlock mode while you're testing it, I'm going to go ahead and lock that back up here. And that's adding an RCO3 into the system. Pretty much the same as the RCO4, just a little bit different because of that separate Rex and AUX. Now let's go ahead and add an IP bridge into the system. 
This is, again, primarily the same, but a little bit different because we have multiple access points within an IP bridge. So let's go ahead and add this access point in. We'll go ahead and type in our MAC address here. And hit the tab button. Because an IP bridge is basically a multi-access point device, we have to configure each access point individually. Whether it's a two-door or a three-door IP bridge, it'll be two or three access points. Go ahead and call number one, file room door. And we'll call number two, MDF door. This is a two-door bridge, so access point name number three said not communicating, so we're not gonna add anything in there because it's basically not there. Now it's gonna walk us through configuring each access point individually, just like in RCO3. Remember the IP bridge and the RCO3 are both PowerNet devices. We'll go ahead and drop this into the all door group and give it a few seconds to initialize its connection. All right, now that it's connected, we'll go ahead and click next. And again, basically it's gonna walk us through the same wizard as the RCO3. Now my IP bridge doesn't have anything connected to it, so I'm just going to click finish later and we'll end this part of the wizard. Obviously on a production environment you can go through and fully configure your access point. Now it's going to ask us to configure our second access point on this IP bridge. So we'll go ahead and drop this into the all door group because it's a group for all doors and we'll give it a few seconds to initialize its connection. And where we can see that our access point is connected. Again, we could walk through and step through these steps, but I don't have anything connected to the IP bridge, so we'll go ahead and click Finish Later now. And here we can see that I've got all four access points added in. This column here tells me that these access points are in the All Doors group, plus any other groups that we put it in in the future. So this is basically the first step in getting our peer access tenant configured. We registered the tenant, we added some access points into it. Now in the next course, we're gonna get into adding users and creating rules and getting these people in through the doors. So in this module, we reviewed registering a new tenant in peer access cloud. We looked at registering a new tenant under a cloud integrator license. And we added access points into peer access using the access point wizard. We looked at the RCO4, the RCO3, and adding in the IP bridge, which is essentially multiple access points. Thank you for watching this training video and have a fantastic day.